No way I'm cracking this.
Well, well. It's the detective. Tracking down another wayward husband to his mistress? Why? Someone stand you up? You trying that, uh, what do you call it? Evasive language on me? And who are you, huh? Valentine's new dick in training? Not your concern. Oh, it's not, huh? Well, with that attitude, you're gonna be in the market for a little insurance. You better back off, or you're the one who's gonna need insurance. What was that? I, I couldn't hear over the sound of all that pathetic. You hand over everything you got in their pockets, or accidents start happening to you. Big, bloody accidents. Whoa, 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 time out. Nick Valentine makes a rare visit to town, and you're hassling his friend here with that extortion crap? Good to see you again, Nick. Hancock? What do you care? He ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn? I said let him go. You I'm soft, listening. Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, there'll be a new man. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. <laughs> now, why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over here. You all right, brother? You killed him. Got a good pair of eyes on you. I think you'll fit in here. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. Yeah, I feel you. Good. You stay cool, and you'll be part of the neighborhood. So long as you remember who's in charge. Brotherhood of Steel better stay out of good neighbor. All I'm saying. Whoever this Brotherhood of Steel is, I'm not buying that. We come in peace, malarkey. Excuse me. Uh, I need a place to stay. Try hey hotel there. Rex. Now I've seen a lot of crazy stuff in my time, but a flying ship? <laughs> Yowza. Mr. Valentine, I thought you had forgotten me about the loan. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big brute. You got the memory pod loaded up? Oh, you're not Irma. Hi. Here for Amari? She's downstairs. Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. We need your help, Doctor. I need the memories from a man named Kellogg. But he's dead. I know it's asking for a miracle, Omari. But you've pulled off the impossible before. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse. You don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function.
Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait, that's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is, the brain implant could fit him. But that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. You really think this'll work, Nick? No idea. We got a missing kid on the line. That's worth the risk. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine. Just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. How do you lock memories? The implant is encoding all the mnemonic activity in the hippocampus. Think of it like computer encryption, and we don't have the password. Let's see. A single mind wouldn't be able to crack it, but we load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. All right, let's get started. Just sit down over there and Keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's generated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. experiencing these memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. Turn down the goddamn radio! I'm trying to 
asleep. Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she... The thing about happiness is... You only know you had it when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but uh, you don't really believe it. Focus on that petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back by comparison with what comes after that you really understand that's what happiness felt like. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. How did you think this was gonna end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us? And we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. I found another memory to try. I'll connect you. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. It was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. So... I don't remember much from that time. There was always someone who wanted someone else well, dead. We seem to be getting closer. Sometimes Try just next roughed one. up, but uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. I'm glad you decided to meet with me. So, you're with the Institute. You heard all sorts of rumors about... The first synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more. And kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but... You have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. To see for myself if you really existed. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. We're running out of brain here. Ah, uh, oh, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Cryogenic stasis suspended. Vault computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all just find it. Pod C6. Down the hall near the end. I never knew why we didn't. I never knew why. Even then, I... I'm glad I didn't have. I never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them. But we had our orders. <laughs> I guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Too bad he left alive the I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I was now the... Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. 
I understood that kind of revenge. I found another no one better. Whenever you're but I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft pre-war vault dweller, even if he somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out, they won't be able to hide from him for long. Is that this whole setup son? in Diamond City was part this of some elaborate very plan man. of the old man's. So Good news, I think. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. Kellogg. It's okay. One of these days you're gonna get your head... The new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the Coursers... They weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines. Pure and simple. Smarter. Stronger and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so this one stood out. I didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, neither did they. Not really. Exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Wow. Some heads are gonna roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. It's all over but the dreaming X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Bye. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready.
Big heads never like taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. But they needed me, and I made sure they knew it. Is it over? <coughs> Are we okay? Almost. Everything's going to be fine. Come here. Come here, baby. No, no. I've got him. Let the boy go. I'm only going to tell you once. I'm not giving you Sean! God damn it. Get the kid out of here and let's go. Please, we still have to back up. Cryogenic sequence reinitialized. What's the holdup? I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. All right, we're good. Manual override initiated. Cry As you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Hmm. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job is done. Is that okay? How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them.
but you've got to give it a chance. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? Okay. That's the way you want to do it? So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek away. I don't know what kind of side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? I'm okay, doctor. Thank you. That's good. But I want you to keep monitoring yourself. We have to be sure there's no long-term damage. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? We got what we needed. The Institute uses teleportation to get in and out. Yes. Their greatest secret has finally been revealed. But that only leads to more questions. How does it work? Where do we go next? That scientist Kellogg was supposed to track down. Virgil, we need to find him. You're right. A rogue institute scientist could answer all kinds of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That doesn't make sense. No one goes there. Not even if they were desperate. If we need to find Virgil, then I'm going after him. If you're going to go, be prepared. You'll need some way to combat the radiation there. It's called the Glowing Sea for a reason. How do I fight that much radiation, Doctor? There are chemical compounds. Radax, Radaway. You'd need as much as you could carry. Maybe more. A sealed environment suit would be great if you could find one. Or maybe one of those suits of power armor? That would be perfect. I'll find a way to get through the rads. Don't worry. Good luck. And be safe. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs.
Hey, Valentine. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. Nick, are you still in there? What? What are you talking about? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Mari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. I'm gonna head out on my own from here, Nick. Good luck out there. You know where to find me. Sticking around, no one to join the crew. I hear Bobby No Nose is looking. Yeah. He's a catch with the No Nose, but she pays. Sweet Pip Boy, brother. Husky the other day. He wishes. All right, all right. We're getting off track. What was I saying? Oh, that's right. What matters? We freaks gotta stick together, and the best way to stick together.
Huh? <laughs> 
is holy ground. Do you have a moment? What do you need of me, child? I'm looking for someone named Virgil. Have you seen him? Yes, I know of him. What do you want with him? I need his help reaching the Institute. I have heard of this Institute. They hide themselves, trying to avoid the power of Adam. A futile effort. In truth, this Virgil has caused some concern. Some believe his presence is an affront to Adam. Though he came to trade with us on a few occasions, we have had little other contact with him. It was quite clear he wanted to be left alone. You can find him southwest of the crater, living in a cave. I would... Let's do this. Radiation poisoning is a common ailment, but we can cure just about anything. Yeah, take a look at me, Doc. Tell me your symptoms. Feeling sick. I think it's radiation. Blood pooling in the gums. Signs of anemia, yeah. We better clean you up. All done. Any other complaints? Took a few bad hits recently. Got knocked around. Oh, wow. That's a lot of blood. We'll need to operate right away. And that's that. 
Anything else bothering you? That was it. Take better care of yourself in the future, okay? Nice piece you got there. Just keep it holster. Who's really in control of Diamond City? Head on inside. So, you're the... What's the angle here? Hey, Piper. Heading my way? Heading my way? Sure, let's go. Will do. Back hurts, my feet hurt, everything hey. hurts. What you got for me? Piper. You holding up, Blue? Why are you calling me that? Cause you're a vault dweller? <laughs> I know you're not wearing the blue jumpsuit right now, but the pit boy and the fish out of water look. Dead giveaways. So here's the deal. I want an interview. Your life story in print. I think it's time Diamond City had a little outside perspective on the Commonwealth. Besides, I'm already following you around. <laughs> Might as well get some quotes while we're at it. What kind of interview is this gonna be? I ask you who you are, get your opinion on life out there, and maybe load up a few tough questions and keep it interesting. What do you say? All right, Piper. I'm in. Good. Let's get down to business. So, I know you're from a vault. How would you describe your time on the inside? My family and I were frozen. I didn't spend much time in the vault. W wait, <laughs> they boxed you up in a fridge? The whole time? Are you saying you were alive before the war? The war? Which war? The one that gave us this lovely landscape of demolished buildings and nuclear radiation every ten feet? You're telling me you saw everything before they blasted it into pieces? Yes. I'm over 200 years old. <laughs> oh my god. The man out of time. So, you've seen the Commonwealth. Diamond City, how does it compare to your old life? Honestly, seeing everyone surviving out here, rebuilding the world, it gives me hope. That's 
surprisingly inspired, Blue. We're definitely quoting that. For the last part of our interview, I'd like to do something different. I want you to make a statement to Diamond City directly. The threat of kidnapping is all but ignored in the Commonwealth. Everyone wants to pretend it just doesn't happen. What would you say to someone out there who's lost a loved one but might be too scared or too numb to the world to look for them? No matter how much you want to give up, don't. You have to have hope that you'll see them again. Or at least, that you'll know the truth. A strong note to end on, Blue. Thanks. That's everything. It's gonna take some time to put this all together, but I think your story is gonna get Diamond City plenty to talk about. Anyway, we should probably get going. Thanks again. This is Ellie Perkins from Valentine's Detective Agency, with a message for Nick's partner. We've got a new case and it sounds urgent. Stop by the office, I'll be waiting. Setting this to repeat. This is Ellie Perkins from Valentine's Detective Agency, with a message for Nick's partner. We've got a new case and it sounds urgent. Stop by the office, I'll be waiting. Setting this to repeat. This is Ellie Perkins from Valentine's Detective Agency, with a message for Nick's partner. We've got a new case and it sounds urgent. Stop by the office, I'll be waiting. Setting this to repeat. This is Ellie Perkins from Valentine's Detective Most Agency, with a message for, for Nick's hand. partner. Oh, We've got a new case and it sounds urgent. Stop by the office, I'll be waiting. Setting this to repeat. This is Ellie Perkins from Valentine's Detective Agency, with a message for Nick's partner. We've got a new case and it sounds urgent. Stop by the office, I'll be waiting. Setting this to repeat. This is Ellie Perkins from Valentine's Detective Agency, with a message for Nick's partner. We've got a new case and it sounds urgent. Stop by the office, I'll be waiting. Setting this to repeat. This is Ellie Perkins from Valentine's Detective Agency, with a message for Nick's partner. We've got a new case and it sounds... It's big, loud of corrupt officials and brown nosy citizens. I ain't telling you how to be your friend. But it's home. Vipers are kind of trouble. So thirsty. Nuka Cola. you're here. We got a new case while you and Nick were out. Ready to put on the detective hat? Tell me more. Our client is a fisherman who lives on the edge of the Commonwealth, Kenji Nakano. Nakano? Huh. That name takes me back. Hmm. My memory's a little fuzzy on the details, though. Maybe if you bothered writing things down, Nick. Can't do that. Wouldn't want to put you out of a job. Huh. I'll remember that the next time you need me to console a hysterical client. Mr. Nakano didn't leave many details. Said he'd go over everything when you meet him. But if you want my guess, missing person case. Guy had a worried look a mile long.
Anything you can tell me about Kenji Nakano? Just some impressions. He was obviously upset, but he was also in a hurry. Like, he couldn't stand just waiting around. I'm a friend of Nick's. He'll remember me. I need his help right away. And then he was gone. He was muttering something on the way out, but... No. I'm not sure it was important. Come on, Ellie. Don't hold out on me. What did he say? N no. No, I, I can't remember clearly. Don't want to taint the investigation before it's even started. I'll go check it out. Thanks, Ellie. The Nakano residence is up in the northeast, near the coast. A small fishing house. He said that he and his wife will be waiting for you. It's a long walk. <laughs> That's how the hard cases always start. Hey, Valentine. Time to hit the road? Let's head out. Well, all right. So, any stories you two come across out there? I get the exclusive, right? Piper, I wouldn't know who else to tell. Be careful when you head over to the Nakano residence. That whole area is pretty isolated. I wonder what the story is between Mr. Nakano and Nick. We should head over to the Nakano residence when we can. Find out what their case is about. Mr. Nakano seemed like a good sort, trying to make the best of things in a tough world. <laughs> Remind you of anyone? Good luck with the case. <laughs> 